I'm in the Abroad in Japan studio, ready to film a Q&A with none other than... Oh, how you doing? It's Chris from the Abroad in Japan channel. Surrounded by copious amounts of fake food, and dare I say, some vodka that I found around the back of the bar. Didn't know it was there. you on YouTube and Instagram what questions you wanted me to ask Chris in this q and I think there was quite a lot of questions so I've made a list of the oh, best repeat. ones. Yeah, better not be, really interesting. I always get the same ones like, what's your favourite place in Japan? Yeah, it's, it's like, going to be a bit different. Yes, yes, I like different. Go on then. Well, first off, a lot of people asked who was the older sibling. There is a big difference between our age actually. I'm clearly younger. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. 40. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people say I look like 46. just want to say a big thank you for watching Abroad Japan. We had a lot of fun and um, I'm retiring. I'm constantly offended by my age. Well, and... Japanese people think I look a lot older. Even when I was 17 I came here, they thought I was 30. Why do they think you look so old? I don't know. I think I look pretty <laughs> young. <laughs> Especially right, when yeah. I came when I was 17, I looked about 10. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think maybe it's the way we dress in the West. I don't know. Lord Just knows. Like don't know. I know Japanese people are generally a lot skinnier, um, oh. but then they age quite badly once they hit 50. Yeah. So they've got the upper hand until they turn 50, then it's all downhill. Because Japanese people are quite thin, they get very wrinkly. The trick is to eat more chicken and uh, get a nice complexion like this. So, yeah, I'm six years younger than Chris. I'm 26. 26. <coughs> Yeah. I'm joking, it's quite spicy yeah, ginger. You've choked on it a few times. Yeah, I know, it's very spicy. Jacqueline asks, do I remember Chris moving to Japan? Huh. Chris was at university for three years, so I basically never saw him. And then he just mm. vanished to Japan. And <laughs> I didn't think you'd be here so long. I thought it would be like <laughs> a year or something, not 10. So. I, yeah, well, I didn't think I'd be here so long, to be <laughs> honest. Yeah, I remember the last time I saw you was uh, when I left that the UK moved to Japan. Was, uh, we had a car boot sale. <laughs> garage sale yeah, and sold uh, everything for 50 yeah I sold like everything I owned which was nothing for like a pound because the idea was to like raise money so I had some money to come to Japan I think that car boot sale we made like a loss because we had to pay <laughs> the fees to have the fucking field to actually go in yeah I think I made about 50 pounds which covered like 10 McDonald's meals when I moved to Japan, so it wasn't all in vain, clearly. But I also remember you taking me to go sushi just before you went. Did I? Yeah. Oh, I do remember water. it. I do remember that. Yeah. What a... You thought it was great. Did I? Like, oh, this is what it's <laughs> going to be like every day. <laughs> Some day about sushi. Good God. From the bin. Like, From the bin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yay sushi. Going back to yay sushi yeah. now is. Uh... I went about a year ago and that's. It's not good. It's not good. Fuck, <laughs> that's such a weird thing to do. Like, remember me. Enjoy it. <laughs> Come to your sushi, eat the sushi, and then goodbye. Like it's a really weird thing to do, but I do remember that actually. Yeah, I remember that. What was it like growing up with each other, and how has Chris changed? I'd like to think I've changed a fair bit. You're a bit nicer now. Excellent. Yeah, Chris, growing up wasn't the nicest brother. I really? To say. You, yeah, put me through torture. Wasn't <laughs> That's just normal, though, isn't it? Footballs. And, I don't uh, remember that. You traumatised me with Cookie the cat, Gran's cat. You yes. used to be like, oh, you're scared of the cat. And then I'd pet it to try and like show I wasn't scared. And then she would attack me. And it was just like this cycle of you <laughs> to taking be the fair. piss out of me when you were scared of Cookie. Yeah, Cookie the cat. I, it's funny, like, I've got a reputation for being someone who doesn't like cats um, ever since an ill-fated cat <laughs> documentary. The reason I didn't like cats was because of our Gran's cat. Cookie, this tortoise shell cat, and it was just the most grumpy, horrible cat. And my first memory of like Cookie was I was stroking it while she was sitting there, and then she just turned around and bit my hand. And it <laughs> yeah, really that's what she used to do to me all the time. Wasn't a nice cat. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm I'm still kind of scared of cats. Yeah. Like I wouldn't pet Morrow and Tune straight away. Oh. I feel like I've. I've They're kind different. of got over it slightly. You've got to get over the fear of getting bitten by a cat. I've yeah. got over dogs because I was scared of dogs as well from that. <laughs> but now I have a dog. Bloody cookie. We treated her well. She was treated like a king, a queen, that cat. And uh, what yeah. do we get for it? Nothing. Just spoiled. Yeah, yeah, spoiled. Chris has changed slightly nicer, although we went kayaking two days ago. <laughs> and Chris would position the kayak so that when he tried to splash me, the wind just flew it into my face and slapped me in the face. It wasn't me. So when I tried to do it back, it was, it the was wind. going back on me it rather was the than wind. Chris. It was nature. Nature is your enemy. Next <laughs> question. The wind blew the water. It was nothing to do with me. Uh, did we fight a lot growing up or did we get along? We didn't really fight. It was more like Chris just being mean and me taking it. <laughs> what annoys you most about Chris? Nothing. <laughs> 
the way you say cherries. What the fuck? You say you say cher what? cherries. Cherries. Cher. What the fuck? <laughs> what are you on about? Ber berries. Berries. You don't say berries. You say like berries. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I've never said that before, but it really annoys what me. Do, you say why does that? Cherries. Cher cherries. Cherries. Well now, well, now you're saying. Che it, you right? like cherries, berries. You want to say it fast. <laughs> time is of the essence. That is great. If I spent all my right? time being like cherries, berries, then it'd probably take cherries. up like. I'll probably lose a third of my life to yeah. pronounce like pronunciation <laughs> of so words much. in really slow ways. Right. <laughs> Fucking cherries and berries. Is there anything so that annoys, annoys you about me? <coughs> I'm annoyed that you're annoyed about how I pronounce. <laughs> I'm going to say pronounce now. now. I'm annoyed that you're annoyed. I'm annoyed that you're annoyed about how I pronounce cherries and berries. That's what annoys me about you. That you would be angry by something so mundane and ridiculous. You say it more than you think. No. So Yuki asked, did Chris inspire me to do YouTube videos and how did I get into doing YouTube? Probably, Chris must have something to do with the fact that I want to do YouTube. For the last seven years, I've probably watched a lot more YouTube than I have TV. No, I think it's more that you are a quite creative person. You do like graphic design and things like that. And you've done work for me with editing in the past. So I think it's more that you are a creatively minded person. You're a creative individual and YouTube helps you get that out. Yeah. Kind of that's how, how I feel, right? Yeah, I enjoy filming. I mean, it's something I've wanted to do for a long time, but it's very daunting being on camera. Like, I like mm. being behind the camera, mm. but taking the step to be on camera was quite difficult. I hate being on, having my photo taken, but <laughs> weirdly, I feel kind of okay on camera now. Like, I don't feel weird about it. Mm. Mm. But when you first pick up the camera and you're talking to a lens, it just feels weird. It's because you don't know who you're talking to yeah, at first. Yeah, I, I think that's a lot of it. I mean, we came with 100 subs, mm. and a lot of them were from two years ago, when we made like four videos. Oh, yeah, yeah. During COVID, we traveled Europe a bit and it stopped abruptly because we were back at university. We weren't traveling. From over, back to university. Yeah, I didn't want to make videos just like about being at university. I wanted to it film interesting things. Seems like, yeah, travel's your inspiration. You're always away. I am. Always away, <laughs> except when you're not because you're at fucking university. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> over now, luckily. Oh, so dear. I'm free. Free. And that's how this has started, basically. Mm. But yeah, I think with YouTube, it takes a certain kind of person. There's different types of people. Some people are like critics and want to talk about anime and films. Others are yeah. natural born entertainers and just like to be in front of the camera doing silly things. Um, I don't know where I fit into it all. I think for me, I always came at it from a filmmaker's perspective. Like I much prefer being behind the camera, filming things, editing. Mm. I do sometimes enjoy presenting videos, but it is like, one of the least fun parts of doing a video for me, you know. It can be quite stressful. Mm. Um, it is, yeah, it is. When you, your brain just goes in your own camera. Uh, like when I was filming with Charlo, it would like all oh, just leave my brain. Because Charlo's joining us of 48 hours in. Fuck me. I, just saw I, I don't like recording in front of people. I just feel silly. And yeah. I think that's a lot of it getting over feeling silly. Well, that took me years to get the hang of. Yeah, it gets to a point where you can like switch a camera on though and you just. You could just go, mm. right? And you, maybe you'll get there eventually, but it takes a lot of time, a lot of practice. But uh, yeah, there's lots of different styles of presenting on YouTube, I think. Though. Just gotta find yours. Did our family travel a lot when we were kids? And do you think our different travel experiences as adults has influenced our worldview a lot? Because I've traveled a lot of like Southeast Asia and yeah, Europe, yeah, and you've just sort of been stationary. Yeah. I, no, I, I've traveled to the, like Korea, Taiwan, China, Japan. I haven't actually been down to Southeast Asia much at all. But we both travelled a lot and it's nothing to do with our parents really, because no. we didn't really go on that many holidays outside of Florida one time. And Spain like three times. Yeah, and Spain. Typical British family. Yeah, we didn't really travel much to be honest. It wasn't until I was about 18 that I started travelling a lot more and going places. Yeah, same I, with me. I think growing up in a small town, uh, it's kind of always wanted to get out of it. And yeah. became obsessed with going away. And also, <laughs> our, our dad didn't really see the value in travel and right. holiday. Uh, he actually worked a lot overseas, uh, everywhere from Dubai and Egypt to Detroit and Switzerland. And so he was like, having a whale of a time. And so he'd come home and he just didn't feel the need to take us on holiday or travel yeah. anywhere, so that was good. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I always wanted to travel a lot. Our grandparents worked in the foreign office. And there's always lots of stories about how they traveled and lived around the world. So that kind of inspired me to want to go overseas and explore the world. But uh, yeah, no, it wasn't until like 18, 19, 20. But I always knew 
after university I was going to go and live overseas somewhere and try and like have some adventures but it didn't really go as planned in some respects because I did actually want to travel and live in a different country like three or four years at a time and I've just stayed in one place. Are you sick of Japan? No, not at all. I love Japan. I'm kind of, sometimes I'm a bit sick of making videos about Japan. Yeah, I'm a bit sick of that at times. But for the most part, I love living here still. You know, I'm not a day has gone by that I'm like, oh, it's time to go. But I am at that point where I'm going to start worrying. I, obviously, moving to Tokyo soon. And um, I think after that, the next step is to move to not Japan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know where, I don't know anything well, about that. Well, you keep going but... on about Switzerland. I don't think it'll be Switzerland. <laughs> I don't, Switzerland's nice, we wouldn't want to live there though. No, but you want to go right. And that go is another it. question. It's what? good chocolate and cheese. Swiss cheese, fondue. Mountains. And mountains. Like I really want to get into climbing. Um, yes. Ooh. Yeah, well that ties in with the next question of what countries do you want to travel? Norway, Sweden, Iceland, Switzerland, Spain. Because we've only been, to, we went to Spain on holiday, but it was only like, you know, very touristy sort the of places. Same place again, again. Yeah. So I'd like to have a, a drive through Spain, have a look a bit, have a look around there. Middle East, I want to go to Jordan and oh, um, I'd like to go there. and poke yeah. around there. Yeah, no, at some point I'd like to go to Thailand. I don't know, it's never really appealed to me that much. I know it's a great place and everyone loves it, but yeah, I, I don't know, I think maybe being in Japan has made me too comfortable. And to go to the Southeast Asia where it's a bit more stressful yeah, to travel around. Zone. Yeah, like Japanese people don't travel that much outside Japan because the country is just so comfortable and everything works and it's brilliant that you kind of feel like oh it's a bit stressful going mm. overseas and I, I hate to admit it but like that Japanese mindset's rubbed off on me a bit I when I go on holiday now I don't know if I have the adventurous spirit I used to have Chris are you supportive of our content creating endeavors endeavors how yeah. do you feel about it uh well I gave you this camera yeah it's pretty supportive and I I've was kind you of ideas. surprised about that yeah I thought it, to be fair, like you were, you were vlogging with another camera, yeah, and I, one. I kind of, I, I always want to help people that do who want to get into YouTube, right? Because I remember when I was starting out, and was nobody really helped me or did anything. Uh, so I'm always trying to supportive of people that start out, and I'd seen that you'd made quite a lot of videos. So then I gave you the camera. I think if you hadn't really made any videos, then yeah. there's no point. But the fact you were actually doing something, like uh, Pete Premier Two, I gave him a camera because he was actually doing things with it. Yeah. Like sometimes I've given people equipment, they've never used it. Like, bloody annoys me. But it's when you see someone actually using it and doing something, you want to help. You want to, yeah. you, you feel like no matter what happens, if I haven't given you this camera, you'd still do well. Yeah, but, but I felt the like, stabilization. <laughs> stabilization got is very shaky hands, yeah, It does help having a good camera. But uh, yeah, and I've also given you some advice on the content you make and what you're doing. But for the most part, I wanted to see what you do and how you'd actually um, do YouTube, so it's been quite interesting. What Did you think you I would give up pretty quick? Not give up, but not as many videos as you put mm. out. You put out quite a lot of content, and uh, I didn't think you'd do this many videos in such a short space yeah, of time. It put me to shame. Done more than I have, and that's that's not good. Mm. But then you, your, <laughs> yours are a lot higher quality, and I'm just trying to like be consistent, right? So right. that I can get better. Because if I'm doing it every single week, mm. I'm like getting better every week. Yeah, and, and it's a constant learning experience. Like hopefully you, you're learning a lot on the go, and, but you you know pretty quickly if you enjoy YouTube or not. Yeah. It takes like three to four videos to work out if you enjoy it, and uh, the fact that you're this far in and still enjoy it and are still doing it, that's pretty encouraging, and tells me that you could be a YouTuber one day. Like a big YouTuber. I've got one more question related to YouTube that my good friend Darren asked. Sure. Uh, he asked, what's the one piece of advice that all those starting out on YouTube need to hear but always ignore? Make sure there's a point to every video. Like, don't just get the camera out one day and be like, hey guys, I'm gonna go buy a sandwich. Like, don't do that. Actually try and think of a plan. Uh, if you're traveling, then it's a little bit different, right? Because you can sort of vlog it, pick and choose what's good and carve a narrative around it. But I would say, Always try and put some thought into your video. There's so many videos on YouTube these days. There's so many people sharing stories and sharing amazing cool things. And you've got to find a way to stand out. And mm. for nearly every video that I do, I always try and think of the, the title and thumbnail first. And in fact, that's probably the first thing I'd say. Always try and ask yourself, what's the title of the video going to be? Because right. that is the thing that determines like 80% of a video success. Mm. So, you know, inside Japan's oldest real car inside Japan's worst XYZ or I spent XYZ on... Do you that do that? Sense. Um, sort of. It, it's hard when you're living out of a car trying to film stuff on the road and like trying to film things as they happen. It can be hard to come up with a sort of narrative. 
And I think that's why we haven't done as many van videos as I expected. We've done a lot of like room tours and like hotel tours. But when it comes to actually being in the van, it's hard to come up with a storyline because you're like rolling out of the car in the morning. And <laughs> <laughs> well, then you'd base it around where you're going and what you're doing, right? Yeah. Like Scarecrow Village. Yeah, like with the last video yeah. we did, we very much had like a a rough sort of story mm. of where we were going to go. But then it ended up actually being a lot better than mm. we expected because it went unexpected. Like we sure. got lost in the woods and for like three hours. <laughs> <laughs> but that's cool. Yeah, that's the most important. You need a story, basically. Yeah. Have a story, but yeah, that's that's what I would say. What do you hate about Japan? What do I hate about Japan? Mm -hmm. um, I think right now, with the whole moving to Tokyo thing, there's a lot of paperwork to be done. There's lots of things, and oh, just there's just so much shit to be done. Mm -hmm. Whereas finding an apartment in the UK and doing things like that, it's effortless. It's so much fucking easier. Here, it's just not fun. But there's just so much paperwork involved. You have to go to the town hall and stamp things and sign things. And there's just lots of bureaucracy. Things take a lot more time and paperwork, and that is not good. Um, also, I worry the country's lost a bit of its, I don't hate this about Japan, but I think the country's lost a bit of its entrepreneurial, innovative spirit. And that's why you've got South Korean, Taiwanese, Chinese, Chinese? <laughs> Fucking hell. So you've got like Taiwan and China and South Korea all fighting and taking over. Yeah, I feel like Japanese com companies are run by like really elderly people who don't have the best knowledge right. about Modern new ideas day. and innov mm. like innovation and uh, yeah i just think the country's gonna like when you play poker and you've got loads of chips right in the 90s even though japanese the japanese economy was going down you still had a lot of poker chips that could help like hold on to from its success in the 60s 70s and 80s but it's just sort of bled the chips away over the last 20 30 years yeah i don't know innovation bureaucracy closed-minded but i think above all the thing i hate about japan actually is those uh, is it microaggressions where people constantly create barriers between you and the country um, by often being like, oh, you can use chopsticks. Whoa, oh, your Japanese is amazing. Whoa, oh, you're, you know, like this sort of weird, like barrier people put up between you and them right. um, and make you feel more foreign, kind of, and make you real, like, like an what kind of, yeah, emphasize that you are an outsider, you're not Japanese. I've been here 11 years and, you know, I kind of get that feeling. Mm. Um, I'll never be Japanese and, uh, yeah, you're constantly reminded of that in everyday life, that you're different, you're special and you're sort of over there. Um, it's not really, to be honest, it hasn't really caused too many problems for me, but if I wanted to live here, you know, have a family here, I think it would be difficult and I think that would cause a lot of problems potentially. But for the most part, it's a hard thing. I did do a whole video on 12 things I hate about Japan though. So probably watch that video because I'm a lot more eloquent in that <laughs> one. What was your favorite show as a kid? Uh, I had many. Thunderbirds, Only <laughs> Fools and Horses, The Simpsons. Some, one of those three maybe. Yeah, probably yeah, Thunderbirds. Yeah, we did watch a lot of The Simpsons. I think Thunderbirds was sort of before my time. Mm. You had the Tracy Island set. Yeah, it's know. good. It's a shame that everyone <laughs> forgot Thunderbirds. It was amazing. It was a bit creepy. Oh, ahead of its time. It was a fit. James asked, what was it like meeting Sharla for the first time? Mm. And it was weird actually, because I've seen her on YouTube for years. She's famous. Yeah, so She's it was YouTuber. kind of weird. I felt like I know, I knew her I when I met like her. That. Yeah, I felt like that. It's, it's well, weird when you meet yeah, someone that's yeah. a YouTuber. Uh, it can be, yeah. A little bit. I don't know, I, I've met so many people who are YouTubers now that it stopped feeling as weird. It's become normal, but mm. yeah. It did feel weird dating Charlotte at first. <laughs> Cause I, I sort of had to separate Charlotte into two people. Charlotte the YouTuber and Charlotte the, cause there are subtle differences, but. It was like when Pete, Pete came to Christmas. Yeah, I Pete felt like I too, knew yeah. Pete because I'd seen him mm. quite a lot online. So when I when he was there for Christmas, <laughs> it was weird. Like, yeah, and he's a live streamer, so like it, that's kind of like just P, isn't it? He's pretty crazy. He's pretty crazy. He was good. He's at Christmas got some though. energy. Yeah, the family loved him. <laughs> <laughs> he was a very entertaining presence. Yeah, we played played poker. Played poker Monopoly, and he was the banker of Monopoly. He didn't want to play; he just wanted to bank the money, just like he does with his <laughs> Twitch channel recently. 
Spoils. Share the spoils, Pete. <laughs> it's gonna kill me. Francis asks, what's been your favorite thing about camping through Japan? I think for mm. me, Japan is just really otherworldly when you go, when you can, because we've got a car, we can go into places people don't normally go. Mm. Like Shikoku was really great because of that, because we just got lost in the mountains and saw abandoned villages and all kinds of stuff you just wouldn't see anywhere else. Because we've yeah. been in a lot of Europe, but it feels, it feels so different driving through Japan. It's really, I mean, I love driving through Japan. It's just my favorite thing. Yeah, and I think also people don't see the countryside enough and see yeah. those sort of places, the Scarecrow Village, whatever, but there's just lots of untouched villages. Like, it's just, it's really weird. Like, you find these sort of countryside villages that are very sort of feudal and mm. low tech and feel like they've just been there, stuck in time. It's like yeah. the 1800s. Yeah. And yeah, it's not uncommon to find these little pockets, these villages in remote mountain regions where they are sort of cut off from the outside world. And it is like going back in time in a way that I don't think the UK has. No. Um, maybe because it's very mountainous as well. With Japan, I love just not knowing what lies over the next mountain. And there's yeah, a sense of discovery and adventure that uh, that I well, certainly don't get in the UK. Yeah, I think I underestimated how big Japan mm. is. Like we left our van in Fukuoka and flew here because it was an 18 hour drive. <laughs> And yeah. we were like, not going to be able to do that, so... I mean, it's deceptively big, but it's also just because it's so damn mountainous, you can't just go in a straight line, right? You have to sort of always take indirect routes around. Yeah, but it means you get to go the scenic route. It's really fun just going and seeing... You just don't know what you're going to see, basically, a lot but, of the time. Yeah, I imagine camping in Japan's pretty good. Yeah, there's camping so up. many road stations. I thought toilets were going to be a big issue, but it's not been an issue once. They're <laughs> literally everywhere. And they're really like high tech ones mm. that will just open up for you. And Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you get unlucky and find one of the old style ones. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's only been like three times when that's happened. Yeah, luckily they're dying off. Let's keep it that way. What's one of your favourite memories of growing up together? I used to make videos when I was like. Oh, four. yeah, to be fair, I did do video stuff when I was a younger person, when I was a kid. Yeah, and I was, you like, would always rope me into it. Mm. And I could never say the lines. Because I was like dodgy three, acting. Dodgy acting. pretending to be a policewoman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love to like make sketches of like little short films and stuff with the uh, crappy like Sony Handycam camera. Yeah, you had a camera. I, I was actually, when I was in primary school, I made a few videos. I remember once I made one about like a warning you about drugs. Oh my God. And stuff, because we've been learning about it in school. So well. I made a, like a full on <laughs> film with my friend Megan on my laptop. So I, I could only record on my webcam. Jesus. Because I didn't have a camera. Wow. <laughs> so you Power made it, of video. You inspired me oh. to make my own videos. Clearly. Jeez. But like it was cool back then that in those days, like, yeah, you'd use like the crappiest cameras. I remember the, one of the first cameras I had, it was like this like pencil webcam. It was like a pencil stick webcam thing. And it was just awful. The video of it was like 110p. It was like <laughs> shit. It was, it was cool having these crappy cameras. Now I've got like 8K wonder camera. 6K super duper camera, so you've come a long way since your webcam and your <laughs> drug videos. Hope there'll be no <laughs> drugs on this channel. Let's keep drugs well, away. Well, the whole thing was it was like, don't do drugs. That Always was the away. Message. Always away on cocaine. What career would you have gotten into if you hadn't become a successful YouTuber? I think it would have been something to do with film still, videos. Like, I was obsessed with it, right? Honestly, it would have, it would have been like making commercials or music videos. It would have, I would have gone towards film. Even though my degree was in business and English linguistics, I would have found a way into it one way or another, I think. The fact that I was making those crappy videos back when I was yeah. like 10 or whatever, and I was obsessed with it then. Just, just things that happen in your life when you're young that dictate almost the, the pathway that you'll inevitably take. You know, I did, I did a few things lined up. I, after university, I was gonna get like a corporate job. Yeah, I remember. And get like a nice salary and do something boring, but yeah. Took a very it been a bizarre. different life. Yeah, and even if YouTube goes wrong now, I would still try and find a way of doing videos and producing yeah. videos, even if it wasn't YouTube, just because that's what gives me energy. Well, that's, that's what, what you're I good enjoy. At now. Jeff, I'm Especially. good at it yet, but like that's what I enjoy doing. You're good at it yet. And if you if your work, you know, if you enjoy your work, then well, yeah, it doesn't feel like can, work. Oh well, yeah, you can exactly. stop until five a.m. in the morning editing another fucking video as I did the other day, and you can you can kind of enjoy it. Yeah. What's the next adventure you're going on? The next adventure. You know what, I, I don't know, so we got like the videos coming out from Journey Across Japan, which we was in Hokkaido, got a video in Kyoto coming out, some camper van thing near Mount Fuji, but like yeah really, beyond that, I haven't really got a whole lot going on. I feel like I've 
and uh, the channel sort of gone off in some wrong directions in recent times and I want to steer the channel back to more carefully scripted curated yeah and also make a short film that's the only thing I really want to do this year and I'll be so angry if I don't do it because every year I go on about how I want to do a short film do you and have it an doesn't idea happen for it? I've got some ideas yeah I do have some ideas unfortunately I've been busy writing a book and that's taken up a lot of time so after the book's done and that and the move to Tokyo and I'm if I'm still alive at that point then I'll make some short films but yeah busy year busy year moving ugh, moving's horrible what about you where you going um I don't really know what we're doing we've got our van back at home the plan was to go to Norway Sweden oh cool basically everywhere you want to go damn it bastard <laughs> <laughs> god damn it that's not fair yeah, we've been waiting for a summer to go up there because we've got a dog and because we're in a van we don't want to go south because it will just be really hot so like mm. in the summer mm. it's a good time to go up to Norway mm, yeah. try and get to the like the northern most northern point oh wow it's full so that'd be cool I don't know if we'd get that far but... you need a boat <laughs> unless you've, you've got your vehicle turns into a boat yeah that'd be good I'll be quite jealous if you do that and I'll be very angry ah, prepare to be angry <laughs> <laughs> prepare to be angry it's weird doing this you think there'd be a lot of freedom to just sort of hop on a plane and fly off to wherever I want but yeah it's not that easy I wish I could just I wish I could just get on a plane and go to Svalbard and go to Sweden but no ain't happening but there's one last special guest that I've invited to meet you right here right now Natsuki oh. here he is it's Natsuki <laughs> hello, hello. hello everyone what's in the bag what's that what's that <laughs> fucking birthday. Fucking birthday. Fucking birthday to you. <laughs> fucking birthday to you. Oh dear. Fucking birthday, dear cool explorer. I think that's how we end the video. <laughs> <laughs> Time to end the video. <laughs> Summon Dom. Yeah, Dom. Yeah. Chris was horrible to me as a child too. <laughs> Natsuki, who should they subscribe to? I say goodbye. How? Say goodbye. Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Kung Fu Mahosta.